already ready. Perfect. Well hello from Bramble Tai again another rip snorting <laughs> event. I believe it's episode 20. Uh, backdrop is the veg garden so behind us we've got the tomatoes they're growing like bilio the weather is extremely hot and uh, what did I say to Lynn last week? Please let's have a quiet week I might be able to get some proper work done but now, was uh, it quiet Steve? That was like touching the uh, <laughs> The paper? It was. With the it lighter? Was, it was. Um, so basically, we thought we'd just recap again on what happened in our adventurous week. Um, you might remember at the end of the uh, cheesecake vlog, we actually said that, you know, we were actually going out to the Cantina Aperto. Um, but we are actually going out to the Cantina Aperto which is in our region. So I'm really looking forward to that. If you don't know anything about it, uh, it's worth knowing. Just put that extra juice on the top. Um, which lasts two days. And uh, did you enjoy it, Steve? Uh, the Cantina Aperto, is a, it's a special weekend in Italy. Um, it's non-religious, obviously, because it's all about uh, making wine and sharing it with just about <laughs> everybody, as much as you can drink as well. Yeah, and I think we might have said, you know, you buy a glass, um, which costs you five euros, and you end up drinking as much wine as you want, but kind of as much as you want, because you get four tastings. And Steve will actually show you some photos and maybe a little bit of a video of some of the cantinas. And they were so mixed from the tiny little cantinas that we visited to some absolutely massive ones that had music, saxophonists, they had DJs, they had everything going on. And it was like, oh wow, this is, this is Abruzzo back in town. Forget the COVID, it was back on action, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, so the point of this is for the, the local vine, uh, the vineyards, uh, to show you their wine. So that was our weekend, that was our Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Uh, moving on throughout the week, we ended up, uh, Button got a new ball. We thought it was about time. You've probably seen her over some of the vlogs playing with this really old football that we ended up finding in the woods. And she loved it. So we actually thought, you know, it's looking a bit tatty. We better buy her a new one. But we've had that for two years. Yeah, we've had the tatty found ball in the woods. And now she gets a brand new ball. Very nice looking blue, white. How long did it last? Five minutes. Should I ask Button how long did your ball last, Button? <laughs> Five minutes. Anyway, you'll see what happened to Button's ball. So that was sort of one of the days. Yeah. Uh, Steve also continued uh, to do more work on the stone. You might have watched the stone vlog and you know that he showed you how to make one of the stone pieces, but he actually needs to make six in total. So Steve continues to do the work on the yeah, stones. Yeah, but now we've got the idea. Now we know what we're doing. Um, it makes a big difference. It does. Um, I feel a bit more comfortable. I'm not a stonemason. Um, you you know, got on with it, didn't you? I'm taking advice from just about everybody on, on how to get this in. And, and people uh, have been really good comments about ageing the stone. Yeah, we've had some good ageing comments. Obviously, yeah. we're, we're going to be um, we're put, gonna be putting stuff on it, like uh, yoghurt, uh, we've had horse manure suggestions. <laughs> we've, had, we've had a load of things. That's going to be great. If you've isn't got it? any more ideas, how we're going to age those stones, then please tell us. Yeah, I just need brilliant. to do a few uh, knocks here and there, chips away, mm -hmm. uh, just the edges knocked off, but not right. too much. Not so too much. We're moving on throughout the week because we think we should do for you. Um, I don't know whether you know, but from our video, who we are, you might know that I did work for an airline and I was very fortunate and worked on Concorde for five years. So I was approached by a friend of mine who got me in contact with a lovely lady who is a journalist and she did an interview uh, with me and hence, if you're interested, that interview about sort of my life on Concorde, working, and the people that I met and the destinations I went to. So that actually happened during the week. And, and from that, um, obviously there's a huge interest in Concorde all over the world, but from that I think what we'll do is we may put a special programme together 
It's only when you listen to Lynn talking about being on Concord, you don't realise the impact that it has um, to people like me and a thousand questions well, that people, came from the people, internet. People like yourself. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that actually want to know. And there's a lot of people out there that did manage to travel on Concord and they've got their own really wonderful memories. So that was the, the Concord interview that we had. And then sort of moving through, um, you know that I absolutely love the raised beds that we've got in the garden here. And, you know, um, Sue's built them for me, but I'm the one that actually maintains them. I'm growing my tomatoes and uh, growing peppers and everything. And in fact, hold on one second, I've even just picked up a cauliflower to show you. Have you seen that one button? Isn't that a lovely cauliflower? So um, I hadn't grown cauliflowers before. And from various conversations, a gentleman from Trinidad and Tobago, um, a diagnostic clinic guy who actually deals with vegetation, is actually contacted me because I contacted him about um, a little fly that we had on, well it was a beetle yeah. on the plant yeah. and anyway so good to see you and we're going to have a sort of little interview with him at some point. So now we move on. Well I was editing. Oh yeah you have been editing. No, I was editing you the were... cherry v cheesecake yeah. video. I was about Steve. three hours in and I get a knock on the door. Uh, and I said to Steve, you know Nadia but I didn't actually say this, but I just said... She didn't say the, the word the, Nadia. The, the, there's a problem. Um, there is a man who speaks English. He's stuck at a garage, and it's close to the coffee shop, and he needs some help with his motorbike. So basically, um, Steve just said, right, we're going to help him. Um, he quickly spoke to the man on the phone and just said, we'll be there in 10 minutes. But I forgot to actually tell Steve. It wasn't in our little village. It was only down the road five minutes. It was more like half an hour away, if not further, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't really a problem. No. It's just that I didn't know where I was going. And in actual fact, I, hadn't, I needed to take the trailer and all the bits and pieces, the ramp or the rope and, and everything, and uh, consequently forgot the number plate for the back of the trailer. So uh, but we anyway. made it. We have now got a special guest with us, one of our latest subscribers, I must say. So, David, come on in. Come, <laughs> come on, on in. and join the gang. You can uh, have a bit of two seats, probably. Yeah. Ah, uh, hello, hello. Hello. My angels of rescue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David keeps calling us the angels of rescue. I'm not too sure yeah, about that. It, it was a rescue. It was not a help. It was a rescue. But much you're... more than a help. It was but David, much over. David, yeah. when we've spoken to you, what do you now call yourself? What is your name? I mean, you know. No, you have to tell everybody. <laughs> well, Go on. Unknown this destination. Unknown destination. Unknown I don't destination. know where I'll be tomorrow, after tomorrow, <laughs> or the next week. I'm just rolling my uh, bicycle, my, uh, my motorcycle, uh. and that's it. And the reason for doing this? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, in but Italian, David, no lo so. No lo so. No lo so. But, yeah. but David has travelled uh, considerably. Uh, we've had some great conversations with him over the past day and a half. Um, he's travelled to India. You, you've travelled to, to Kathmandu. You've travelled all over the place, haven't you? Uh, not yet all over the world. Not yet all over the world. He's still got that to do. Yeah. And how, how is Abruzzo for you? The what? How is Abruzzo? How is this area? How is this region? How, Abruzzo. Oh, it's a kind of... It's more than uh, than heaven. Why? Because I lived another another time. I was there almost dead. Yeah. Yeah. And you came. Really, I was uh, completely lost because we tried many phone number. The police station was closed. Normal. It, it's a Sunday. It was Remember, this it was, was Sunday. Su it was Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, yeah. It was Sunday. David. Closed. Nobody wants to come to help me. And suddenly, I didn't see them. It came from the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but what you'll find here is if a, if a police car was driving past, they would carry on driving past. Oh, oh not no. always, no. <laughs> that, that, that sort of, we know, we some, we've got some very good no, uh, but, but, but really, you know, she, she told the story just like that, you know. No, it's not just like that. No, not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I was completely lost. Really, I did. I I was almost three hours in the in this uh, petrol station. No one speak English. No one do that. No one do that. No. But there was a little angel. She she was working there. Yeah, Nadia. And she, yeah, Nadia. Nadia. And she told me I have a friend English English. I said okay, give her to me. And that's where God said, ah. don't be worried. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, 
For those of you who have seen the, the coffee uh, vlog that we did, which is with a lovely lady called Nadia who actually works in the petrol station where David actually uh, got stuck, um, she said, well, the only people I could think of was us. And she rang me on the phone. In fact, I was actually having a conversation with my cousin at the time. And I thought, this is very strange. I'm getting a phone call from Nadia. But I didn't just get one phone call. She kept phoning. I got about three or four phone calls. And I thought, I've got to take this. Did you think you might have had a job in the shop? Ah, uh, oh, that's probably it. I never thought about that. Making, making uh, coffee. Yeah, after I'd made the coffee, maybe Nadia wanted me to go and help. But no, Nadia said, please speak to this man and please help him. So hence... We thought it was good that you met David um, because I also put on a very small um, little video on Facebook um, about the rescue because it was a very funny rescue with our trailer and everything. Yeah, but the rescue, it's the small part of the whole story. Oh, it is, it is. <laughs> yes. Wait, wait, wait. The res no, it, in the beginning it was, oh my God, uh, I am lucky, I got so, the lottery. So David, you said to me, on the phone yeah. have you got a trailer yes, yes. yes. have you got a ramp yes, yes. <laughs> have you got ropes have yeah. you got this have you got that yeah. yes yes yes, yes. 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 Yeah. everything was all well, yes in the beginning for me it was the whole story the rescue and after that we brought the uh, motorcycle to here to the yeah. farm yeah to bramble top yeah and then we, le we left it here. took me to the hotel come on take this out. we spoke with the owner then this my friend blah 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 and then a tour around here with his, well, I had a taxi driver, <laughs> took me there, took me here, uh. yeah, <laughs> my God, I don't know how, I don't know how many tanks I can, I, I, had, the, the, I had no, I had no, he idea. subscribed, it's David, you're, you're one of our yeah. major subscribers, uh, yeah, but no. <laughs> also, also, also a big thank you to Gino at the Techno Garage in, oh, yeah. uh, in, uh, in Guadigreli, yeah, yeah. And, and just um, to remember, the, don't remember, thank you to the one who took, the motorcycle to Gino. Oh, that's you, that's you. <laughs> yeah, I was recovering. Um, yeah, uh, Gino, they are a supplier of uh, Yamaha, Aprila, uh, Motogazi, and uh, they really are the best. They have uh, very large meetings, the Harley Ds, Harley Davidsons, and um, what is it, Indian motorcycles, yeah. massive events. Uh, they're just the loveliest people. It's a family business, and we're going there to pick the bike up this afternoon. So that's basically the story. So the, the good thing is, um, we've just had a cup of coffee before we've actually had a chat to you. And um, basically, David and Steve made the decision to say to me, I was the one that was going to have to phone Gino yes. to find out whether the motorbike was going to be ready. It helps because of the Signora. Ah, you said so. You started, you must have finished it. You started and with the phone in Sunday. I did. Yeah. You I must did. finish it. I did, yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm just the only right. <laughs> and the good thing was, um, I had my little speech all organised in Italian to ask him, you know, when will the bike be ready? Um, because David is going to go onwards on his travels. You're, yeah. you're visiting a little bit more of Italy, but then yeah. you're going to go into yeah. Croatia, yeah, I believe. Croatia, yeah. Um, so the fact is, I had it all planned what I was going to say, but I didn't even have to say it. He just said, is that the blonde lady in Italian <laughs> to me? What did he actually say? Bionda. Bionda. Bionda Signora. The Bionda Signora. And I said, see. Sí. And then he explained to me, the bike is ready this afternoon. 24 hours. Yeah. So we can only say uh, thank you to them because they have about 200 motorbikes to fix, I believe. You saw lots of motorbikes yeah, that were ready. A lot of them. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them. Um, so kind of... That kind of sums it up as to what our week was like. Yeah, I mean... It's the, not finished. Uh, or we visited friends for dinner. Yeah, but they're, they're talking about the motorbike. The rescue is yeah. uh, something that uh, I hope we would do anyway. Mm. And anybody would do anywhere it's, in the world. Yeah. And, uh, uh, all, no, no, not the, the rescue. Again, it's the small part of the story. <laughs> really? But, but, in the beginning, it no. was my whole life. But we believe... The rescue. But... <laughs> but a day after and a day after, it's become the small part of the story. But, but, also, but our philosophy is to pass it on. If yes. you don't know about this, passing pass it, it on means yeah. helping somebody else yeah. down the line. And, and you don't know when it might be. It could be anybody helping somebody across the road, which sounds very simple, but it could be. But, or giving somebody a bottle of water, whatever it might be. Wine. Wine? Oh, yeah, definitely wine. But, you Not know, it could be, could be a bottle of water as well. You never know. And also, the, the people... 
we don't have the facilities you, you probably gather because Steve's actually, you know, we are building this house, we are restoring this house. Unfortunately, we didn't have the facilities to be able to put David up sort of here. You know, maybe he could have slept in his tent if he wanted yeah. to in the olive grove, but uh, there was a small hotel in our village. Oh, very and nice. And they one. were very, very good. Nice. And, you and very cheap. You stayed 35 yeah. euros a night, yeah, including it? breakfast. Oh my gosh, 35 <laughs> euros <laughs> including breakfast. Yeah. yeah, I'll be there. So we actually have to say thank you also to uh, Claudio yeah. and the family there at Il Tilio. We have Claudio, who was the man from Il Tilio. Il Tilio, C C C, and Lynn and Steve, a multi mangiare Il Tilio, and Il Tilio. Uh, Oh, bellissimo. I want to say one word. Si. This is the best pasta I have eaten ah. in my life. Ah. Grazie a tutti, grazie a tutti per essere i nostri clienti e vi voglio bene. Un abbraccio. Oh, molto bene. Ah. So, hotel, the best I have been in this area. In Abruzzo. The Abruzzo, best yeah, in, in Abruzzo. Abruzzo. Yeah. So, everybody, if you ever come to Abruzzo, every bike, every motorcycle that you want an attractive road to ride with many curves <laughs> and to end the day yeah. in the good bed and the best meal, yeah. this is the place. Good. Here is it. Okay. One thing I did think was funny, you kept saying to Steve and I, can I not just get a taxi? I mean, I think you could have got a donkey well, easier than getting a taxi from the Therefore village. I said, the rescue became the small part of the uh, story. Oh. It's not finished yet. It's not, yeah. No, we have to go. Yeah, but, we have to go you know, it was, Maybe it, it sounds stupid, uh, this kind of question, mm. because I didn't know the area, but now I never ask this. <laughs> so what I would say to you all is, it's goodbye from Lynn, Goodbye from him, me. him, which is Steve. Goodbye from David, because he's going to be onwards travelling. And you know where Button is? She's sitting on the floor at the moment, relaxing. And if you haven't already subscribed to us, we would love you to uh, subscribe, because you never know what other adventures we might come up against, or have, or do, or whatever. And we'd love you to come on our adventure with us, and also on the restoration of our property. Uh, tick the like. Uh, so... Mwah. Goodbye and lovely to see and you all again. To, uh, ding the bell. And ding that bell. Okay. Bye now. Ciao. Ciao. Arrivederci.